and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to continue working on my Peacoat project. So this has been kind of a slow going project and I'm really trying to slow down and just kind of take my time with it because I have a very specific idea of how I want it to look and I'm trying out some tailoring techniques with this project as well. So I'm just giving myself the space and time to really, you know, give it the time that it needs. I used my trench coat pattern that I created a few months ago to create this pattern. And that pattern and this pattern were based off of a blazer that I thrifted a while ago. I did fully interface the entire coat shell, which I also posted a few videos back. And I did that because I wanted the coat to have a little bit more structure and kind of keep its shape a little bit better. Sometimes with wool, if you don't interface it fully, it can kind of, it just looks kind of floppy, you know? So I really wanted to give this coat a lot of structure. So I went ahead and interfaced the entire thing with a fusible interfacing. That's this black material here. And then for the front here, for the lapels and the front panels of this coat, I also reinforced it with hair canvas. So this is horsehair canvas. It's just a sew in interfacing that adds a little bit of extra structure and body to a garment. And especially for something like pad stitching, it's really gonna help you get the shape that you want out of those pieces. In last week's video, I showed how I did the pad stitching for the lapel. And that pad stitching is just going to give this coat a more tailored finish and make everything lie really nice and crisp. I'll put links down in the description to all of the things I'm talking about. You can kind of check out the other videos that I've done sharing the process of making this coat. And if I hadn't done this, then this probably would always be just kind of like flopping around out here. It would, wouldn't really want to stay open, but you can see here, this wants to fall back in place. Now I want to just take this off of the dress form. I want to trim away all of the seam allowance of the canvas so that it doesn't add additional bulk to the seam allowance when I sew everything together. But I'm really gonna try to finish this coat this week. Today's Wednesday, it's getting kinda late in the week. That might be a little bit of a lofty goal, but I do have something planned this weekend that I wanna wear the coat for. Okay, I'm gonna get started. Instead of using steam for my iron, which never works well with my iron because it's not a very good iron, I'm using a misting spray bottle to spray the seams with water. And I'm also using a press cloth so that I'm not getting the iron directly on the wool fabric and also not melting the interfacing that I have on the back of the fabric. And you can see that these seams press really, really nicely with a little bit of steam. I also did not trim the hair canvas at the shoulder seam and I'm just letting that lay over the shoulder seam to reduce bulk. Okay, so I've got the coat shell put together and <laughs> I just realized, again, I forgot to do the freaking pockets. <laughs> I always forget the pockets. So I'm gonna put some inseam pockets. It's not a huge deal. All I need to do is just seam rip open where I wanna put the pockets. And actually, since I've got this nice and pressed, it might make it a little easier. I don't know, I'm just trying to convince myself that it's not a big deal that I once again forgot to take into account my pockets. I was gonna do the sleeves today, but I'm actually getting kind of hungry. It's getting close to dinner time. I'm gonna go make some dinner. So I've got the sleeves sewn together. I just gotta inset the sleeves, add pockets, and then do the lining. I also need to do the collar. So that is the plan for tomorrow. Okay, it is the next day and I am working on the sleeves this morning. I went ahead and prepped the sleeve caps by sewing two rows of basting stitches across the top of the sleeve cap. So you wanna sew these so that they're going to basically straddle the seam allowance. So I sewed one at 3 8 inch, one at 3 quarter inch, and I used the longest stitch length on my sewing machine, which is six millimeters. And then I just gathered those slightly to add a little bit of curve to the top of the sleeve cap. Essentially what you're trying to do by gathering the sleeve like this is kind of start to curve it as it would over the shoulder. Once I had the gathers, in here, I wanted to just press this to set it. So I'm using a tailor's ham to press that curve in the sleeve cap. And a tailor's ham, you can pick this up at 
pretty much any sewing supply store is gonna have one of these. And I'm using a press cloth here because I just wanna avoid touching the iron directly to the wool. It's probably fine, but I'm just being a little bit extra about this. I'm also using a spray bottle to mist the fabric before ironing it because my iron is not great with steam. So I don't ever put any water in my iron because it just like spurts out everywhere. And it gets really annoying and frustrating. And this is just a misting bottle. I'll put a link to this as well. This is amazing. I love these things. And then I'm just pressing that around that tailor's ham to kind of set that curve into the top of the sleeve cap. So now I'm ready to start inserting the sleeves into the bodice. And the fun thing about working with wool is that wool just really takes on shape and presses so well. So this morning I was kind of like dreading starting the sleeve because I, I felt like, oh, this is just one more step I really need to do before I set in the sleeve. But it went so, it only took me just a couple of minutes to do each sleeve. And it's gonna make a big difference in the way that the sleeve looks once it's attached to the bodice. So anyway, definitely recommend doing little steps like this when you're working with wool, especially. So now that I've got these prepped, I'm just going to inset the sleeve as I would normally. So I'll turn the jacket inside out and have the sleeve right side out so that I can do right sides together and just set in the sleeve as I normally would. And I've also just allowed the hair canvas here to kind of lay over that seam allowance at the shoulder. So I didn't sew it into the seam allowance, I just laid it over that. So now I can just go over and sew around the perimeter of the sleeve to attach it to the bodice. In addition to forming that curved shape at the shoulder, that gathering also helps us ease in the sleeve a little bit easier, especially on a, a thick fabric like this wool. So um, I'm really happy with how this fits in here. Actually, I think this is gonna be a really nice sleeve. I also went in and trimmed the seam allowance of the sleeve assembly just at the under portion of the arm side. So I trimmed that down to, I don't know, by probably about 3 8 inch. And then I just left the top untrimmed. This isn't as consequential. And that'll also add a little extra structure to the top of the shoulder there. But you definitely wanna trim around the lower curved portion of the arm side because if you don't trim that down, it's gonna feel really tight in the arm side. Okay, and here it is with the sleeves attached. I think these turned out fantastic. You can see kind of how that sleeve curves nicely over the top of the shoulder there. Um, so yeah, I think this looks pretty great. I'm not doing any shoulder pads or extra structure in the sleeves. And the reason for that is because I never really liked the way jackets look on me with shoulder pads. And I did some shoulder, I did like a lot of tailoring and structuring and shoulder pads and all of that when I made my Jessica blazer a few years ago. And I ended up taking all of it out because it was just too much. It was just too much. It felt just too bulky in there for me. So I really just prefer to have, you know, I, I feel like less is more in this situation for me personally. Um, another thing too, when I first sewed the shell together and the sleeves actually, before I put the sleeves into the jacket, I kind of like slipped them over my arm and I got a little bit nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, these sleeves feel so tight. But then I remembered that, you know, once you get these things set into the actual garment and you trim those seam allowances, it makes all the difference because that seam allowance at the arm side can feel so tight. Even just that extra quarter inch to three eighths inch of a seam allowance around those curved portions of, a, of an arm side can completely alter the fit of the garment. So it's best to not make any rash judgments about the fit of your garment until you get those seam allowances trimmed down, specifically at curved portions of the garment and places where it's going to be going into like a crevice on your body, like your arm side, your crotch seams, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I feel pretty good about this. I actually sewed the seam allowance for the sleeve just a little bit more narrow. So I had a, just a tiny bit more ease in the sleeves and I'm happy with that decision. That way I can probably wear a sweater under it and feel pretty comfortable. Anyhow, overall, pretty happy with the direction this is going. I would love to get this thing finished this week. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm ready to move on to another project at this point. All right, so now I want to start shaping the collar. The collar is basically the same combination of layers as 
the lapel. So I've got my interfaced wool here, and then I've got a layer of hair canvas. It's the same shape as the collar. And I've cut the hair canvas on the bias for this piece. Now, because I drafted this by tracing another garment, the roll line is a little bit kind of fuzzy for me on this. And I kind of realized that with my trench coat project. So what I've done here is basted the collar to the jacket, and I'm just trying to kind of figure out where the roll line kind of wants to be. So I have a pretty good idea of where the roll line starts on this coat. I'm just gonna make a few marks on here, and then I'll just use the same pad stitching technique to form the roll line of the collar. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that because I did show a lot of the pad stitching for the lapel in my last video. I'm also using a video I found on Bernadette Banner's YouTube channel where she sits with a tailor and they talk about pad stitching a collar. I'll put a link down to that in the description below this video. I'm gonna make a few marks on this collar just to kind of keep myself mindful of where that roll line actually is in the back and start working on the pad stitching to form this kind of curved edge right here along the collar. I decided to trim down the two ends of the collar by about an eighth of an inch each. And this is just gonna help keep the upper collar turned down and not flip up at the ends when it's sewn to the under collar. And I did the same thing for the facings of the lapel and just tapered those back to the corner. All right, so I've got the collar all pad stitched and attached it back on the jacket have it on the mannequin here. I really like, I really, really like how this really shaped that collar. I think it looks really nice, especially in the back here. It stands really nice. So right now it is a little after three. I really wanted to finish this jacket today. It's not going to happen because we do have dinner plans tonight. Like this morning I got up early and I thought I'm going to I'm going to get this jacket finished today. <laughs> it just didn't happen. This pad stitching took me like three hours or more. So it really ate into the day, but I'm really glad I did it. And I don't know, there's something really satisfying about doing this particular tailoring technique for me personally. And um, I'm really, really happy with the direction it's going. So I think I'm gonna spend a little time today cutting out some of the pieces for the lining and the interlining for this coat. Maybe tomorrow I'll actually start assembling all of that. And once I get those things done, I think it'll actually come together pretty quickly. For this coat, I am adding an interlining for extra warmth. And my interlining is made out of flannel, so I just duplicated all of the bodice pieces for the lining, and I'm going to baste those flannel pieces to the Rayon Bimberg lining that I'm using for this jacket. And I'm not doing this for the sleeves, I'm only doing it for the bodice because I didn't want the jacket to get too hot. So I just basted all of the edges of those pieces together, and then those pieces can act as one for the lining, and I'll assemble the lining as I would normally.
Once I have the lining sewn together, I can attach it to the shell of the jacket. So I'm just turning the shell inside out, but laying it face up. So right side up, and then I'll lay the lining face down so that the pieces are right sides together. And then I'm gonna sew around the entire perimeter of the lapels and the collar from one side to the other. When I get to the top of the lapel, I'm going to sew right up to the seam allowance where the lapel meets the collar. I'm gonna stop and pick up and place my needle back down on the collar side so that I don't sew down that seam allowance because that'll keep the collar, you know, it'll kind of restrict the collar movement. And I'll sew across the collar to the other side, do the same thing on the other side, and then continue down the other side of the lapel. I also graded the seam allowance of the lapel and the collar. And so the facing seam allowance and the under collar seam allowance is gonna be graded down to about a quarter inch. And then the other side of the seam allowance will be graded down to about three eighths of an inch. So they kind of step down and it's not like a harsh step down and it also reduces bulk. Once I have everything graded, I'm going to turn the jacket right side out and press all of the edges of the lapel and the collar really well. So it's very early on a Saturday morning and I'm still not done with this coat, but I'm going to try to finish it today or at least get it to a point where I can wear it because I'm going to Detroit today and today all I have left to do is bag the lining, which I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on just because I've shown that in another video that I'll link below in my trench coat video. What else? Oh, I need to add pockets and then um, I need to top stitch around, you know, the lapel and the front seams and add buttons and buttonholes. And I think that's it, I think. So I may not be able to do every single one of those things before I leave today. I'm really tired this morning at like 3 a.m. People were outside shoveling the sidewalks, which I appreciate, but they were also, I think, drunk and like talking smack and very loudly talking smack. And so they probably woke up the entire apartment complex. So that was fun, not really. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get started and quit quit procrastinating and try to finish this thing. So bagging the lining is one of those kind of magical techniques that I have gone over before. And I'll link the video below where I did this on my jacket, but you essentially attach the hems of the sleeves for the shell and the lining together when it's turned inside out. And then when you turn it right side out, everything magically comes together. It is really cool. So that's what I did for this, but definitely go watch that video where I explain it in a lot more detail. Next, I just wanted to top stitch around the entire edge of the lapels and the collar. And I'm going with a kind of wide top stitch here. I really liked some images that I saw online of, you know, that wide top stitching at the lapel. It kind of had a little bit of a vintage feel to it. So that's what I'm doing for this. And I'm going all the way around the lapel and the collar on both sides. This coat also has a back vent at the bottom back of the bodice and I'm going to be finishing this by hand so I'm just turning under the seam allowance of the lining and then pressing it on top of the shell where I have that turned under and I'm going to hand stitch that in place along that seam and then I'll do the same thing for the other side of the vent except for this one's just going to kind of overlap the one that I just finished sewing. I also talk about this process a little bit more in detail in that trench coat video that I've got linked below. I'm kind of in a hurry to get this coat wearable for the weekend, so I'm going to sew in some temporary snaps until I'm ready to sew on the buttons and buttonholes.
All right, so it's been a few days since I last worked on the coat. On Friday and Saturday of last week, I was really trying to just push through and get this coat finished because I had plans to go to Detroit with my mother-in-law and see a Broadway show. We went to see uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, and I really wanted to wear my coat. So I got as much done as I could before we had to leave. Now, I still have a few things that I need to do. I need to add some pockets. I need to do a little bit of finishing stitching around the collar. And I was thinking I was going to need to add buttons and buttonholes, like a more permanent situation for the buttons and buttonholes, but I actually really like the snaps. So I'm gonna live with those a little bit longer and you know, see if I change my mind. I can always go in and add the buttons and buttonholes later. Now for the pockets for this coat, I was kind of thinking of doing some inseam pockets. And I had talked about that earlier in the video and I went ahead and kind of continued with the coat construction while I thought on that idea. Well, now I've got the coat all closed up and I went ahead and just went for it because I think I'm going to do patch pockets. So when I was looking at some of the inspiration images for the coats that I really liked, a couple of them had these really large, really simple patch pockets. And I actually kind of liked it. I think it looked really nice on the style of coat. And I can always go back in and add the inseam pockets later if I want to. It'd be pretty easy to just open up the lining and go in there and add those pockets. I have enough fabric left over to make a couple of really large patch pockets to go on the front of the jacket. I don't really want a very visible edge stitch on the pockets if I do a patch pocket. So I think hand stitching those to the front of the jacket would actually look a lot better and do like a similar top stitching detail that I did around the lapel and the collar and do that on the pocket before I attach it to the jacket and then just hand stitch the edge of the pocket to the jacket. I just think it'll look really cool. I think it'll kind of give it a nice vibe. I'm going to try it and see how I like it. If I don't like it, I can always take them off later and, you know, go with the inseam pockets. So for the collar finishing, the only thing I have left to do is to stitch kind of in the ditch of that collar seam where it attaches to the jacket on both the shell and the facings. And I'm actually just going to tack it in just a few spots, like maybe three or four spots along the length of that collar, just to kind of keep those pieces held together and make sure that they don't kind of slip out of place and become a little bit, a little bit misshapen over, you know, over the years while I'm wearing this. And I think that'll be pretty much it for this coat for now. Um, I feel like there was something else I was supposed to do too, but I think that's it. Oh my gosh, finally done with this coat. Every time I do a coat project, I get about halfway through and I start thinking, is this ever going to end? And the answer is yes, it does end. And it has a very rewarding result. And I love this coat. I've made a lot of outerwear. A lot of my earlier outerwear projects were a little bit more impulsive. I've just been wanting to make myself something a little bit more classic in a color that would fit into my wardrobe a lot more. And this coat definitely fits the bill. So. Very happy with how this turned out. Originally, I had planned to make this a double-breasted jacket so it would have overlapped a little bit more, like so. Um, but it just feels more comfortable to have it single-breasted. And I just wasn't ready to commit to buttonholes yet. So I thought I'll just put some snaps on there. Well, now that I have the snaps on, I think that they just fit this coat so well. So I think I'm gonna stick with the snaps. Yesterday, I was actually wearing the jacket after I put the pockets on and I was like, wow, like I, I made this. This is something that I made and this is something that Several years ago, I probably wouldn't have thought that I could make something like this. Doing a project like this is such a confidence booster. I've said in previous videos before, well, one video in particular, I remember I said, you know, you shouldn't be so intimidated by these bigger projects because when it comes down to it, it's just rows of stitching. It's just lines of stitching. Someone commented on that video. I think they might've been a troll. I don't know, but they commented on that video like, don't say, it's just rows of stitching. Sewing is really hard. You know, sewing can be challenging, but I think it's a mindset thing. And I think if you have the right mindset with any creative endeavor, you can do it. 
And, you know, it is just lines of stitching. It really is. And some of those lines of stitching are a little bit more challenging than others. But if you are willing to put in the time, you can really make yourself some quite beautiful and well-fitting garments that you can be really proud of. This is something that I see myself wearing for decades. This is something that I see being kind of a legacy piece in my wardrobe and being passed down to my, maybe my children and grandchildren and nieces or nephews. Like this is something that will be in my closet for the rest of my life. And I'm really proud of that. We live in a world where fast fashion is the norm and there are so many things available to us in stores that are mass produced. In my own experience, most of those things never fit quite right. Because they're so cheap and often so cheaply made, they don't last. And I also don't have the same level of respect for those garments that I have for the garments that I make myself. So it is easier to have a higher turnover with those ready to wear garments than it is for the garments that I make myself. Even garments that I've made, you know, in the last couple of years that I just don't wear that much. I have such a hard time getting rid of them because I made them. And it also makes me more conscientious of the way that I bring new items into my wardrobe. That's something I've been talking a lot more about in the last couple of months about just being more intentional with the things that I'm bringing into my wardrobe and not being as impulsive because I am going to invest time and money, you know, into the supplies and the construction of these garments. I want them to last. Anyhow, I'll step off my soapbox here, but that is why I love this coat. I've just been really fulfilled by this project. Although I am so damn glad that I'm done with it. I'm so ready to move on to some simpler projects. I do have some simpler projects coming up in the next few weeks. Anyhow, if you guys enjoyed that, please be sure to subscribe, hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. And if you liked this project, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. If you have something negative to say, I honestly, I don't want to hear it because I, you know, I love this project and I don't care if you don't like it, but if you do like it, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear about any outerwear projects you're currently working on or thinking of working on. Yeah. I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.